reason why both of us are sitting here today, there is a probably a chance if you have opened your phone yesterday, you stumbled upon some videos or some um, conspiracy thing that's been going around <laughs> about what's happening with us. But we've been married for 13 years. And in the past 13 years, um, like every couple, we've been expecting and praying and believing that God will not only bless us our marriage, but He will also bless us with a family. And as your pastors, we want to share our testimony today. Today is our testimony. And, um, and our testimony is that, like they say, we are pregnant. So. Guys, <laughs> thank you so much. I, I knew it was a big deal to us. I just didn't know how big of a deal it was for everybody else. <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> for your love. Yeah. So uh, we're so glad that we can arrive at the season where everybody will stop asking us <laughs> why you don't have children. So um, we found this out about four years or three years into our marriage that we cannot have children. So biologically, on both my side and Alana's side, that we cannot have children. And, um, you know, grow, growing up in the culture, my grandma, and she has 16. You know, my parents have five. Um, Alana's parents have five. Let's give a round for my grandma. We love her. We believe biblically that God wants us to have children and that God wants us to be fruitful and to multiply. It is a biblical thing, but when you arrive at the season or where, hey, this is not able to happen to you, um, and as pastors, as leaders, you know, we had a lot of um, things to do to kind of, so what do we do about that? And, and can you share a little bit about some of the process that we went through um, in the beginning? Yeah. Um, so, you know how a lot of people who cannot have children especially women it can take a toll on them mm -hmm. i'm not saying that was me but i did have to deal with the reality that you know what maybe it will never happen and i had to come to a few conclusions and both of us including and i just want to share one of them is that um, we have to decide that our identity cannot be wrapped around the blessings of the lord first of all God wants us to be blessed. God desires for us to be married, for married people to have children, okay, for financial blessings to be there. All of those things, it's God's will for us to have them. Now, sometimes for some reasons, um, some of us just don't have that, right? And many of you can probably relate to some of these things. And mm -hmm. I just believe that we cannot wrap our identity around the blessings of the Lord. But also not to give up to believe for those things. Because I think sometimes what happens is that when, when I know in the beginning, for us, it, it's almost like, well, maybe it's not God's will. You know, and it's easy when the doctor says you can't have children. Or it's easy maybe when the doctor says, you know what, um, and doctors are not the problem, so do not... Under no circumstances, we belittle the medical professionals. Or maybe you're looking at your situation and you're maybe already in that stage where you wished by this time to be married and it's not working out and you're not married. It's easy to allow the situation yeah. to become your revelation. Where now you believe about God's will based on what you experience, not based on what it says in the Bible. You know, and so we had to literally embrace not our experience, not reject our experience, but to say well, that's what we experience, we can't explain. But what God said in His Word, that is true. The children are the blessing. That God wants to bless our marriages and God wants to prosper us and God wants us to be effective in our communities. And just because we're going through that, we're not going to change our doctrine based on that experience. We're not going to change God's truth based on what we have in our life. We're going to stick to what God teaches and if our experience doesn't line up with it right now, maybe it will line up later. But even if it doesn't line up, God's Word is still the truth. Come on, it's really good. Yeah, just because we could not have children, we, didn't, we, we had to come to the conclusion that 
it's still God's will for us to be fruitful and to multiply. Come on. Come on. And like we can't, like he said, we can't have uh, our doctrine to be changed just because our circumstances and our life didn't reflect that, mm-hmm. right? And so another thing that I was mentioning is that our identity cannot be wrapped around the blessings of the Lord. Yeah. And our focus still has to stay on Jesus Christ yeah. and pleasing Him in this life. Regardless if we have financial blessing, if we have children or not, mm-hmm. if we're married or not, mm-hmm. those things are good. But if we are too desperate, mm. more desperate for the blessings of the Lord than for the Lord Himself, we're missing the whole point. Right? Come on. And I think that going through this journey, in the beginning, we were a little bit desperate. And I think afterwards, when it came to the point where the desperate, because desperation is unhealthy. It can lead to depression. It can lead to anxiety. It can lead to dissatisfaction in your walk with the Lord. And what the worst part about desperation toward the blessings of God is that it actually distracts you, distracts you from God Himself. And it distracts you from things that are eternal. And so we had to come to a point where we decided that we will be hungry for the blessing, but not desperate for it. Meaning we desire it, but what we are desperate for is that Jesus is glorified in our life, whether we have children or not. Where God's will is fulfilled through our life in whatever situation that we are in. Like the Bible says, in everything give thanks to God. Not for everything. Sometimes situation is not good, but God is still good in that situation. And that gives us joy. We might not feel happiness sometimes, especially when everybody keeps coming around, you know, sharing us their dreams or they're sharing us their prophetic words or constantly kind of like asking about that. That could kind of like throw you out of that place of peace and you're like, oh, everybody's, that's the only thing they're thinking about. That's the only thing they're saying that. But to push that to the side and say, no, we're going to have peace because we have joy in Jesus in our fulfillment with Him. Jesus wasn't married, He didn't have kids, and He still fulfilled the will of God. So maybe you're here today, you're single and you're depressed. You're single and you feel like, man, I, I got like a, a sickness, a sickness a singleness is like a sickness. It's not a sickness. Uh, maybe you're here and you're financially struggling and it feels like, man, I'm doing something wrong. Something is not right. Some kind of a curse is not broken. Sometimes it's just simply, you got to find your identity. Go back to your identities in Jesus. You're loved by Jesus and eternity is more important than the physical blessings we experience from God. Though we are not rejecting them, renouncing them and do not want them. Yeah, and I think it comes down to our focus and we shouldn't be focusing on the things that we don't have. Yeah. Because we all have those things. If yeah. we're going to clinch to the things and constantly in this negative negativity, we are not going to be thankful for the things that we do have. Because, for example, we didn't have you know, kids for so long, it was easy to focus on that thing. But how much more God gave us and for how much more. Like Jacko. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we, the things we that we could have, we were thankful us. for was so much more than just this thing yeah. that we did not have. Yeah. So, That's yeah. so, so good. And I think the third thing that we learned through this process, and, and honestly, we want to share this with each and every one of you, is don't be jealous of people who get naturally what takes you prayer, fasting, and 10 years. For example, some of you got pregnant and you were not even wanting it. It just happened. You're grateful for it. You're like, man, whoa, what do we do with this now? And a lot of people get pregnant. In fact, 60 million babies got aborted. That means people didn't want them. For us, the issue of something that takes easy, natural for most people. For us, it had to be a miracle. It had to be faith. It had to be trusting God. There will be areas in all of our lives where something comes easy, like getting married. You're literally fighting off people because everybody wants to marry you. And then there's other person has to literally walk by faith to believe for that area that comes so naturally for other people. Same thing for finances. There are some people, anything they touch turns to gold. Other people, anything they touch they need God to touch it a million times before it turns into anything. Because it really requires faith. Like think of Sarah and Hagar, uh, Abraham's uh, wife and then Abraham's servant. You know, Sarah is a woman of God, you know, and Abraham is a man of God. And they can't have children, but they have money. They can't have children. Money come easy. 
children doesn't come easy and it's not because Abraham had a curse on his life or because Abraham did something wrong actually it was just we don't know real reason why this was happening Hagar literally sleeps with Abraham sleeps with Abraham one time and the girl's pregnant and she is like she's not in the covenant with God and it seems like man that's not fair the other person gets it like this and with me I have to literally walk 15 years fast pray sacrifice like do all of this stuff and so we have to understand is that God works with each one of us individually and we have to appreciate the process God takes us through and not to always look at somebody else's process and say well you know it always comes easy for them trust me there are areas in their life they're also believing and fighting for and I, and I think it's important to realize that when you are uh, desiring something that you don't have and praying and stay, standing in faith, the devil will come with his lies mm. that, you know what, you're probably not good enough. Yeah. You're probably, something is wrong with you. You're mm -hmm. worthless. So those lies, they need to be pushed come on. back. Come on. Because the devil is a liar and God does right. not think those thoughts toward come us, on. even if we are lacking something. Number four would be the, um, before God brings us a miracle, God always gives us a promise. Mm. Could you elaborate on that one? So with us, especially with me, is that when I was in the Ukraine a few years ago, actually about nine years ago um, or eight years ago, um, I felt the Lord gave me a promise that we will have a child. In fact, I had a very vivid um, picture not only a vivid picture, I had a vivid um, image and it wasn't something I was thinking about. It wasn't something I conjured up. It wasn't just my imagination. It was something that gripped my heart, filled me with deep emotion and I felt like it was a promise from God. In fact, I even got a name right there and then of this baby's, um, this baby's gonna be real. I went to the store that day and bought sets of clothes didn't even know where to find a baby section but you know I asked the clerk in Ukraine and then they guided me I got bought set of sets of clothes hanged them in our closet for about seven years um, and after that people always came up and prayed I actually after that day stopped praying for children I started to thank God that God is faithful that's all and people would come up and say you know when is that I said I don't know he gave me a promise I know he's gonna be faithful um, Maybe spirit. Some people say, maybe, then I was start thinking, well, what if it's spiritual? I don't know. I said, and then I took the clothes from the closet. We lost the clothes because we moved so many times. So I lost the clothes, but I never lost the promise. And I felt like we no longer after that had faith for the promise. We just had trust in the one who gave the promise. Because in the beginning I had faith. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Then I, you know, start getting these prophetic words. It's gonna happen in 12 months. I remember we came to this church and a prophet came up and they said, I see by this time you're gonna have a baby. I was like, thank you. And so then the church actually declared a fast so this, pro this prophecy would come true. It didn't. You know, and it could be very disappointing. I have more prophecies about my children than I have about probably all of you put together. Um, it's, it's, it's literally every person that I come in, every dream that people have about us is always about the children. I'm like, when is the Lord gonna talk to you guys about me and stuff? So, but it's, it's always about the children and, and it gets a little bit disappointing afterwards when you're not seeing it. And for me, it was always been about God gave me a promise and he is faithful to his promise. Um, I'm not holding on to the promise. The promise is holding on me, holding me. It's his promise, not mine. And he's gonna take care of it. And if, if it doesn't happen, my response is what the three Hebrew boys did to the king who wanted to burn them. Our God that we serve is faithful. He's good. He will deliver us. But if he does not, oh great king, you must know. To your gods, I will not bow. And your idols, I will not serve. Meaning, I'm going to stay true to God. I'm going to stay faithful to God because I know he is faithful. A practice of mine is to go on the mountain uh, to spend time with the Lord occasionally sometimes it's once a month sometimes it's more and on September last year I went to Mount Hood for three days rented a little cabin or a little Airbnb and just to spend time with the Lord and so disconnect from everything and just pray and just search my heart and hear what the Lord is saying about my life and uh, the church and the future on the way back I remember this like yesterday driving early morning I was driving back home already and I heard the Lord it wasn't audible but I heard the Lord say he said, this time next year, you will have a child. Now, it filled me, the glory of God filled the, the, the car. 
I started to weep because I, first of all, I wasn't thinking about it. Um, that was completely not on my radar. I go to the coffee shop. I kind of have a journal, so I journaled it. And, and I remember I bought a, a card and I wrote to my wife, uh, at, came home and gave her a card. And, you know, and I said, we're going to be parents. And this time, this year, September, and that's when we were already pregnant. Yeah, I, I remember. Yeah, so. When I saw that card, I was like, oh my gosh, is this my husband? <laughs> he wrote in Lana, I think I'm ready to be a father and something like that. I was like teared up on a spot. It was so emotional and yeah. yeah. And I felt like for the first time last year, when the Lord spoke to me about the timing of it, I knew that's exactly what's going to happen. And stuff so not that I don't believe in the prophetic words I do and there are a lot of people gave the prophetic words but that time something I knew it was it was from the Lord and so um, and and so when we found out that we were pregnant of course it was very um, you know beautiful feeling but also scary feeling and about a month and a half ago um, you know Lana start uh, bleeding heavily the bleeding continued for a month and until one night it, it got so bad that um, she started fainting and, um, and something really large came out and we actually thought it was, it, was the, it was the baby. And so it was probably one of the most scariest experiences of my life, uh, sitting in the ER for a whole night. And it was Sunday night, Monday we were doing the fast. I was actually streaming during the fast uh, on Monday morning and, and right there in the hospital, God gave me of course reassurance from the scripture and it was not it was not the baby, um, it was just the bleeding that she was experiencing and that bleeding continued for weeks. And you know, we stood in faith, we said, Lord, we know that you're faithful. And, um, and so the bleeding completely stopped and, uh, and the baby's healthy and we are... We, we actually prayed with my group of uh, girls mm -hmm. for me for that issue specifically and a few days after that my bleeding decreased and then it completely stopped. So. I believe that the Lord is going to take care of. We are trusting that Amen. this pregnancy will go through healthy Amen. to the very end. Come and on. we also, <laughs> yeah. And I just want to say thank you so much for every person who, were, who, who was praying for us and who is praying for us because I know there are people who actually praying for us. Yeah. I just want to say thank you so much yes. from the bottom of our hearts. And we ask you that you please don't stop praying until we actually see the baby. Amen. Amen.